Hi guys, what's up? It's Lindsay and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be making a vegan and gluten-free chocolate chocolate cake. It is one of my favorite things that I do every single year. This will be the fourth year of me making a chocolate cake for myself on my birthday. I just really love it. I know how I like my cakes and I figured I would share some tips with you about making cakes and also just chat, talk about growing up and being a year older. So I asked you guys some questions over on Instagram and yeah, without further ado, we're just gonna jump right on into it because I need this cake to cool and that usually takes the most amount of time. The first thing we're gonna do is spray these two eight inch cake pans and dust them with cocoa powder. Then just set them aside. That is so our cake doesn't stick to the pans. And now to start on the wet ingredients, bananas, applesauce, almond butter, and potato starch. This recipe is by Minimalist Baker and everything I've made from her turns out well. I just don't question the ingredients, listen to the recipe, and usually, fingers crossed, it works. I got a lot of people asking what I'm doing for my birthday, how I'm celebrating, and I have been celebrating pretty much, I feel like, all week. I got my nails done, which you might have been able to notice already because I never have long nails. I got these like incredible lavender gel extensions. So that was something I did. I've been seeing a lot of friends that I haven't seen in a long time, like over a year. And I went to a surprise party. I went out to some really good new vegan restaurants that I haven't been to. But today for my actual birthday so far, I got breakfast with my boyfriend. I went to the farmer's market and met up with a friend that I haven't seen in a really long time. Then for dinner tonight, I am going out to dinner to a very fancy Mexican restaurant called Gracias Madre. It's all vegan and meeting up with all my friends there. So I'm really looking forward to that and just like dressing up and being at a restaurant. Some people really hate their birthdays and maybe it's the Gemini me, but I just, I've always really loved mine. I think it's super fun, but this year I'm super excited to like be able to hug everyone in person. Like I just, it doesn't feel real. And so I'm, I'm feeling really good today. I'm just super excited about that. That's a teacher. That's a tablespoon. That's a tablespoon. What is one thing you are most proud of doing at 23? Um, 23 was a really hard year for me, obviously, because we were in the middle of a pandemic. I would have to say that I really um, learned to embrace the unknown. It's something I am terrible with and have worked on a lot in therapy, just like embracing the unexpected and rolling with the punches and just you're not really in control of everything in your life. And that used to really freak me out and it still does. But last year, so many things were unexpected. I got laid off twice. So just the fact that I didn't let that stop me, I kept going and made the most of it. I, I really love where I am right now and the, the people that I'm working with, just sort of accepting that things work out the way they're supposed to, even though this past year was not what any of us expected at all. Do not forget to put all of your things away when you are done with them. That is the biggest tip when it comes to baking. Otherwise, you'll be surrounded by mess. This cake is actually naturally sweetened, so I'm using three-fourths of a cup of dark maple syrup and half a cup of coconut palm sugar, which is kind of like brown sugar, but less sweet. Yeah, this is gonna be all of our maple syrup for sure. This is one of those things where you're like, it's vegan, so it's healthy, um, but it's this much maple syrup. What is your very favorite summer recipe? Definitely a peach cobbler. Nothing beats it. You can really only make it during the summer because peaches are only in season during the summer. And it takes a lot of work because you have to like boil the peaches to take the skin off. It's optional, but I always do that. It's worth all of the effort. What is your favorite part about being in your 20s? That is a good question. Uh, maybe just that it's like normalized to still be figuring your life out because almost everyone I know is like unsure about what they want to do forever and where they want to live and what they want to be doing in general. And I, I just enjoy that that is, um, that's okay. <laughs> do you regret moving to LA? No, not at all. I actually, the more I, the longer I've lived here, the more I love it. 
and the more friends I've had from college move up here. I'm only an hour away from my family. I really grew up going to LA, so it didn't feel like this like crazy move. I can't believe I've been here for two years now. It just felt like the, like the natural place to go, and so far I'm definitely happy living here still. What has been your favorite thing to bake lately? Um, you know, I tend to make a lot of cookies because they're just like easy to eat as like a single person, but lately I've been making more cakes. I made my sister a gluten-free and vegan carrot cake with my mom and that was so delicious. Wow, that smells nice and sweet. What is post-grad life like? Are you happy? Um, I'm very lucky. I am super happy. I love what I do. But post-grad life in general is definitely a huge like midlife crisis moment that I think a lot of people don't really talk about when you're going into college. They're like, you're gonna have the best four years of your life, have fun. But they don't talk about like the after where you're just like, now what? I know everyone that graduated last year is graduating this year, even my year, which was two years ago. It's been difficult to get jobs and networking has been really hard. Making new friends has been really hard. So I feel like now it's starting to pick up, but the past two years for post-grad students, I have felt really bad for. And it's okay if you don't want to do what you majored in. I think that's like pretty common, honestly, is to kind of graduate and maybe rethink what you actually want to work and do all day. Any vacation plans for this year? I do not have any. Um, I would really love to visit my sister in Seattle. So if you live in Seattle and have any recommendations, please give them to me because that's probably the first place I'm going to be visiting on a plane. I uh, still haven't been to New York. I was supposed to two years ago and I would love to go to like a tropical vacation at some point. I haven't done that in a really long time, so we'll see. <sighs> I have my computer for the recipe and I forgot what I was doing. How is 24 feeling? I'm mentally preparing myself. So far, I would say it feels uh, the same. I've just felt more and more like an almost adult. Like I have a dog, I have my life together. I'm very financially independent, but at the same time, I need to call my dad anytime there's a light on my dash in my car. And I still call my mom like every single day. So I'd say that I'm like getting closer and closer to being like a real adult, but I'm still kind of in that in-between where I'm like, I don't want to make decisions on my own. I feel like I need to ask my parents what to do. When I wanted to get Sammy, I called everyone I know and asked them if I should do it or not. And they were all like, you're an adult. You can make that decision. You didn't even have to ask but I felt like I needed to, and I wanted people to decide for me. Hopefully in 24, I will be more confident in just like my own decision-making and not feel the need to like ask my parents or my friends. Of course, I'll still ask them, but not like rely on their answers. It's hard to grow up. <laughs> This is now where the recipe is going to get a bit messy because I need to sift cocoa powder. Uh, but sifting is always worth it, especially with cocoa powder because it's like all little rocks in there. Post-pandemic anxiety and how has the pandemic changed you? Those are very related for me because I definitely have experienced feeling more anxious to like go to social events or to go inside at restaurants. Like it still just doesn't feel quite right because I mean, it's just been so long. So I definitely relate to that. And I'm just taking it slowly and not pushing myself, just doing what feels comfortable. And like I said, the other day I went to a surprise party and I just knew like I could always leave early. It was outside and I vaccinated. So like <laughs> it should be completely fine, but I still just like, was a bit anxious. Now we are adding in the potato starch, which uh, you might think is weird, but it really works in gluten-free baking. This is starting to look and smell like cake mix. Up until now, was a little unsure, <laughs> not gonna lie. Things were looking a little weird. You just gotta be open-minded. Just preheated our oven. And now we are going to add in the last dry ingredient, which is almond flour and it's asking for quite a bit so that's why i have two bags of it wow yum you guys need a closer look at this this is optional it's not even in her recipe but i like to add some chocolate chips because there's just something about having 
chocolate chips within cake. <laughs> that was more than I expected. That's okay though. <laughs> there are worse problems to have than too many chocolate chips. It is now time to fill our cake pans and I like to use a little pastry scale just so I can get them about the same amount of fullness so that the cake slices are the same size. I just put our cakes in the oven and I'm going to rotate their position at halfway and then while they're cooling, we'll make the frosting. It has been about 30 minutes, so it is now time to start making our chocolate buttercream. This recipe is super easy. I've made it a ton of times. The first ingredient is one entire cup of vegan butter with a fourth a cup of melted semi-sweet chocolate. I just used the same chocolate chips from earlier and just melted them. And then the other ingredients are vanilla, oat milk, and cocoa powder and then you slowly add in powdered sugar. So that is what I'm going to be doing. I've also made this frosting by hand or with a handheld mixer. You don't have to have a stand mixer. My roommate just has one and I'm lazy, so I'm using it. And you can adjust how much powdered sugar you put in this frosting, depending on how sweet you like it. The moral story of baking is just to sift everything and it's a pain, but it's always worth it. Now for pouring all of this into the mixer, which is usually when it's going to coat your clothes. There's just no way around it. Wow, I really look like a baker right now. <laughs> we are embracing it. I need an apron, honestly. I don't have one. It is super hot in this kitchen. I am covered in powdered sugar and everything needs to cool. So I just put the cake in the fridge and I'm also gonna put the frosting in the fridge for about 45 minutes to an hour. Normally I would let these chill for like three hours. You could even do it overnight for like the best uh, frosted cake at the end. But I have my birthday dinner tonight, so I'm kind of in a rush, but I think we'll be okay. These slices are nice and cold. I accidentally cracked one, I'm not gonna lie, but um, I'll just, Put it on the bottom, no one will know. It's fine, it's a two tiered cake, so like, it's not gonna fall apart, hopefully. I knew that it was like not cool enough when I moved it and that's why it cracked, but that's okay. So here's our bottom layer and then this puppy will be our top layer. I like a lot of frosting in the middle, personally. Someone asked me, what are your wildest dreams? At the moment, if we go wildest, um, I would love to own a house. Like I follow Emma Chamberlain and she just bought an old house to renovate. And that sounds like something I would really love to do someday. Um, definitely like not a huge house, but just like the thought of having all of the design inside the house be of my own opinion and like my own style sounds like the absolute dream. Oh, that was a beautiful handoff. And then we're just gonna smack that right on top. Absolutely gorgeous. I'm not that particular when it comes to frosting cakes. I feel like it looks kind of cute when it's messy and um, either way it'll taste good. So this works for me. I don't have any sprinkles, otherwise I would have done some little rainbow sprinkles. I just have some raspberries, so that's what I topped it with. I still think it looks pretty cute though, but I'm gonna put this in the fridge so that it can chill, and then I'll slice into it later and be sure to show you what the inside looks like and how it tastes. Good job, queen. That's some Happy birthday to you. It's Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. That is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed hanging out with me uh, baking my 24th birthday cake. I have been on YouTube since I was a child and so many of you guys have been here for the journey and for so many of my birthdays. So thank you so much for all the birthday wishes in my Instagram DMs. It has just been warming my heart all day and I hope you guys enjoyed this. Maybe uh, make the recipe and let me know how it goes for you. And I will see you with some new content very soon. Bye guys.